I hate training agility, so we're going to embark upon a long journey of doing a ton of quests so I can get a minuscule amount of agility XP without actually having to train agility. The actual XP rate is probably abysmal, but we're one level away from being able to train on the Anachronia course, which, when I'm training on the Anachronia course, I'll have a chance of getting certain totem pieces, which is definitely something I want. So we're beginning with Anakra's Lament. These are all prerequisite quests, so let's see if you can guess what quest we're building up to before we actually get to it. Leave your guesses in the comments below. I feel dirty saying that. We can now talk to camels. Tell of the Muspa, we find a Muspa, and then we help a Majorat named Jalan. I'm sure he's going to be very significant in the future. Perhaps he'll become an ally to us and help us fight the Elder Gods. Some token XP for a very short quest. This quest is only a prerequisite because it gives us access to Troll Vice. And then we can go sledding. We... Hey, and we get some agility XP from this quest too. Curse of Arav is up next. Have you guessed what quest we're building up to yet? You probably have. Another strange prerequisite, but it's a bit of a hint because the White Knights are involved in this quest that we're working up to. I'm surprised I hadn't done this quest sooner. The Great Brain Robbery. Funny thing about this quest, when I was maybe eight or nine, I used to play Neopets, and this quest, the name of it, always reminds me of the Great Brain Tree. Anyone who's ever played Neopets knows what I'm talking about, but I always think this is the Great Brain Tree Robbery. But it's not, it's the Great Brain Robbery, because it's got nothing to do with trees. I haven't fed my Neopets in over a decade. I'm sure they're fine. When Rocking Out first came out in 2008, I couldn't do it because I did not have 69 smithing. Smithing was expensive, and I was a stupid player, and I didn't know how to make money. I lost my quest cape that day. It was very sad. Something tells me Captain Izzy Nobeard is going to be important in a future quest. I don't know, something about his character model makes me think he's significant. Eh, it's just a hunch. Hey, more agility XP. This was another quest that had kind of steep requirements, at least at the time, for me. 65 smithing and 50 rune crafting? You gotta be kidding me. It's just not a good week if you don't show up on a holy island and kill a bunch of monks with an arrow fired from a sword. I like that the XP you get for this quest is just 100 times the required levels for the quest. I just thought that was kind of neat. We need kudos. Also, I would like to find the old necklace so we can teleport to the dig site or the exam center or Sentistan. We didn't find the necklace, but we did get enough kudos so we can move on to the next quest. But first, a reaper assignment. We got a berserker ring. I'm going to hold on to it a bit because it's a requirement for a master clue. And also, with the Rex Matriarchs requiring 10 of these rings to make the new ring, I think these might skyrocket in price a bit. We also got a Dragon Hatchet. I won't hold on to that because I don't expect the price to fluctuate much in the near future. With that, we finally have over 200 boss kills, which means we can unlock the Altar of War in War's Retreat. Now we have an Altar close to a Teleport, which also restores summoning points. An excellent unlock, and I'm happy to have it. And I'm happy you're here to share it with me. I love you. We siphoned our Candomatic, and we got 75 Invention. Temple at Sentistin is the quest which unlocks curses, which aren't that good unless you have 92 or 95 prayer. We don't have 92 or 95 prayer, but that's fine, because it's a prerequisite for the later quest we're going to be doing. That's right. This isn't the quest we're building up to. It is a different quest we're building up to. If you thought it was Temple at Sentistin, you were wrong. When I saw this, 15-year-old me was losing his friggin' mind. Zaros was in the game. And he wouldn't really be in the game for another, like, what, five years? Regardless, he was my favorite god at the time. I was 15, and because I was 15, I was an edgelord. And Zaros was the god of shadows, darkness, and mystery. He was so cool. He was like Shadow the Hedgehog, but in RuneScape. And you know, a RuneScape-playing teenager in the late aughts. Knows what cool is. Zaros and Shadow the Hedgehog. As is usually the case, I don't remember what I used the XP lamps on, but I'm sure I used them on a skill. That much, I'm certain of. This is the quest we were building up to. If you guessed Ritual of the Maserat, then you are right. You win nothing. Come on, Certain Death, you'll be safe out here. Oh. Oh look, it's my favorite dragonkin, Sakurath Strithath of Sithath. I hate these things. It turns out, once you kill the two ice demons that you have to fight, you just have to wait around 
for everyone else to kill the rest of the ice demons, you can't actually help them. This quest used to be a lot more difficult. Now it's just boring. Um, yeah, anticlimactic. Oh, hey! It's Jalan, that Majra we helped, who turned himself into a Muspa. Maybe he's here to help us fight. Oh. All that effort to get 110,000 agility XP and 380k XP lamps. Which, if I remember correctly, I used on Herblore. But we did get 85 agility, which means we can complete the entire Anachronia agility course. Which means we can more effectively earn codex pages to unlock double surge. But first, a mini quest, Koshe's Troubles. There was a time when Jagex was teasing that one Majorat was hidden, and we didn't know who he was. This actually mirrored a plot point from an episode of Doctor Who, where the Doctor basically hid himself as a regular human, and kept his consciousness, I guess you could say, it's been a while since I saw the episode, in a watch. What's interesting is one of the Doctor's enemies, the Master, whose original name is Koshai, was masquerading as a human, on Earth at one point. Ah. So everyone assumed, oh, Koshai, he's probably he's probably the Majorite, he's hiding himself. And it also turns out that this myth exists in I think Russian folklore or something, of a warrior who hides away and like hides his essence in items or something. I don't know, the details are unimportant. Regardless, it was a fan prediction that turned out to be true. Koshai is Karshai. The names aren't that different. Honestly, that's probably the only information you need to assume that Koshai is Karshai, since they have basically the same name. All the other information, all the other details is just fluff. Kind of a waste of time, really. We finish the mini quest, and we get the enhanced Belmung, and we can get some additional rewards at 90 strength and 90 prayer. We'll come back to that later. This opens up Majorat Memories which is a very long and tedious mini-quest which requires us to harvest a ton of Divine Memories. When this mini-quest first came out, the only real method of training Divination was by training Divination. And this mini-quest gave quite a good amount of bonus XP and raw XP, so it was worth doing. We're not going to do it all now. Uh, I don't know if I really <laughs> want to do it all now because it's pretty tedious. But having a fully charged anger meter does make you take less damage on Freniske, which will be useful when we do Fate of the Gods. Although I can't imagine taking too much damage on Freniske without the anger meter. So eh, we're probably going to do Fate of the Gods before we fill up the anger meter anyway. We'll figure that out when the time comes. I completely forgot, once you get 80 prayer, you can come back to Gothic Shrine, you know, where he died and pay respects and get 250,000 prayer XP. Of course, you need to do World Wakes first, but we did that ages ago. Killed some dinosaurs, got 93 Hunter. Oh, <laughs> we got another Dragomatic. Wow, that price has dropped significantly. What happened? Oh well, 14 mil. It's nothing to sneeze at. Here's the loot from one round of Corbicular Rex, one round of Spaghetti Apatarosaur, and I think one round of Simatops and Bagrata Rex. I'm not exactly sure. But I don't sell the meat of the Tier 1 dinosaurs. I only sell the meat of the Tier 2 dinosaurs. The Tier 1 dinosaurs I use to hunt Tier 2 dinosaurs. Here's the loot without the Dragonmatic. 8 mil. I love these dinosaurs. With all the quests we've been doing and all of the lamps we've been using on Herblore, we were close to a level, so I got 93 Herblore. We can make a lot of Supreme Potions. We're probably never going to. Okay. <laughs> we got another Matic. We have so many hunter marks, and we have really nothing to do with them, so we're going to buy the blueprint for the Elite Trapper outfit. That's a one-time purchase. Get it out of the way. We're going to spend the rest of our marks on dinosaur eggs. We could buy lures or frog repellents, but I really don't think it's worth the cost. Sure, the dinosaur lure can let you hunt the dinosaurs as much as you want, and the frog repellent saves you one piece of bait per round, but that doesn't seem worth it to me. It's a difference of one extra meat. So instead, we're going to buy a bunch of dinosaur eggs, and we're going to see what we get. We get a Pavasaurus Rex, which is worth 6 mil. We get a Bagrata Rex, which is worth 7 mil. 
At the time of recording, the Rex Matriarchs didn't come out yet, and the price of the Bugatti Rex hadn't crashed yet. Got a Ripper Dinosaur for 8 mil, and an Ascia Tops for 3.5 mil. Whether they actually sell for those prices is a mystery, and we will find out soon enough. So here's the total collected loot from another series of big game hunting. I'm going to take away the unchecked animals and the Matic, so we still got 19 mil. The great thing about this money-making method is that even if you don't get the rare drops, it's pretty consistent. You're going to make a decent amount of money. It's the meat. The meat is worth so much money. We got the essential oils while doing the Anachronia course, which is great because we'll need that to upgrade to the tier 3 player lodge once we get 90 agility. Oh my god. We got Tojo Mojo. Man, this is a lucky episode. Another skilling pet. You can get a few totem pieces from the Anachronia agility course, and I was really hoping to get the treasure totem piece. But we got the crystal totem piece, which is fine. If we search the rubble here, we'll get the remaining piece we need. And then we can set it up at any one of the three places in Anachronia that takes the totems and charge it every week with the Remo totem that we have at our base. So we don't actually have to run to the thing to charge it. We're going to put it here for now. Although admittedly, the totem of the abyss probably would have been a better one to put here since we could teleport to it and then go to the farming patch right near it. Oh well. 94 Hunter, we can hunt Oculi Apoterosaur. We're never going to do it. You don't make money from them unless you get a Pterosaur Mall piece, which is very rare. I prefer consistent money, not huge money. Speaking of huge money, we got another Matic. That's three in this episode. And look at that, it's already dropped by 700k. These clips weren't recorded that far apart. For whatever reason, the Dragon Matic was just crashing. Probably because I keep getting so many. I did some clues. Garbage. But a court summon, so we're not going to reroll. A master clue? Uh, yeah, we'll keep it. Okay, more garbage. I really wish that that thing saying the clues were added to the casket didn't get in the way all the time. Okay, terrible. Reroll again. Okay, ooh, Robin Hat. Hmm, neat. All right, next clue has garbage. Garbage. And, okay, a fortunate component, that's fine. And garbage. I'm going to re-roll it, and we get more garbage. We made three mil, and it didn't take more than an hour to do, so at least three mil an hour. It's not terrible. It's not great. It's not terrible. After a total of 41 laps on the Anachronia Agility course, I now have 514 codex pages, which means we can get the untradeable double surge codex. We could get 250 more and get the tradable version and sell it for 70 something mil, but I want double surge for me. For me. And only me. So now we have double surge and we could zip zoom all across the map. Because we got bladed dive, double surge, doom doom doom, and just go everywhere. With mobile every 10 seconds, woof woof woof. It'll definitely make big game hunter a lot easier. I'm finally bringing a Dominarian device to Reldo so we can get him to stop asking about it. And he gives us the Anvaronaut Relic. This unlocks the Relic Power Sticky Fingers, which means when pickpocketing, we will automatically attempt to pickpocket again until we get caught. It's like Prif Elves, but everywhere. We finished a Tetra Compass, so let's open the casket. Nothing special. As much as I hate training combat outside of Slayer, I really want to get 85 strength now, so we can do Birthright of the Dwarves as soon as possible, so I can go ahead and mine with an Amkando pickaxe. Most people know that E3, the Shadow Reef, is very good for combat XP. You don't kill the bosses, you just kill the trash mobs. It's ED3 trash runs. Usually people do it in groups, but I don't like doing things in groups because I'm a loner. At the recording of this clip, there were still butterflies flying around Gelenor. And I grabbed one and got 79 fire making. 85 strength, that means we can now do Birthright of the Dwarves. Here's the loot from 80 to 85 strength, or maybe it was 81 to 85 strength. We got lucky with relics. We got three of the ones that are worth one mil. And we got a ton of large, no, that's huge salvage, huge rune salvage, which out for 40k each. So seven mil, not too bad. Didn't take very long either. They recommend we do Watchtower first for some reason. So I'm going to do Watchtower first. I'm again surprised we hadn't done this sooner, but we're going to do it now. You ever been hanging out in a cave with your dragons? And then somebody pours some liquid on you and you melt. 
a inconsequential magic XP, which would have been very useful weeks ago. The finale of the Dwarf questline, which for some reason didn't come with a graphical overhaul to Keldegrim, which is a real shame. Keldegrim is so bland. When this quest first came out, it was so difficult for me. I didn't have overloads, I had terrible gear, my weapons sucked. But now, <laughs> this fight was trivial. The XP rewards are nice. But now, with this quest completed, we can go into the Lava Flow Mine... And when lava geysers pop up, we can basically fight them and then mine them and get pieces of the Mkando pickaxe. We need to get four of them, and we need to get a gilded dragon pickaxe. This is what the geyser looks like. You use water spells, destroy it, mine it, simple. Fastest way to get four pieces is just to world hop and find a geyser in a world. You also need to get a liquid gold nymph to gild a dragon pickaxe for you which is a lot simpler now because it's not RNG, you just need to mine for about 20 minutes and then she shows up and she gilds it for you. Go to Thurgo with a red berry pie, one mil, the four pieces of the Imkando pickaxe and the gilded dragon pickaxe and he will make you an Imkando pickaxe, an augmentable tier 80 pickaxe. It's basically a Bane pickaxe plus four, but you can augment it. I'm gonna do a bunch of mining. I bought a bunch of Benite stone spirits, I got my perfect juju mining potions, I got my skill chompers and we're gonna AFK like hell and we're gonna mine so much damn ore. Siphoning our pickaxe, and we get 76 invention. We have all the pieces of the emerald, sapphire, and ruby golem outfits, which means we can merge them together and create the magic golem outfit, which is the elite skilling outfit for mining. It inherits the XP boost from the golden mining outfit, but it also increases our critical hit chance by 5%, gives us a plus one rock opportunity multiplier, and most importantly, the best and totally not useless bonus is that living rock creatures will no longer be aggressive to us. I could keep all of this bainite ore, smelt it, turn it into bars, level up my smithing. But I really don't want to do any smithing right now. We made about 30 mil, spent about 10 mil on stone spirits. So an ultimate profit of 20 mil. It probably took about 10 to 15 hours to do all this, but it was AFK and easy. I don't know that I would recommend it as a primary source of making money, but it is a source of making money. And if you enjoy it, that's all that matters. We did get five metamorphic geodes, so let's see what's inside. Some rep at God Wars Dungeon 2. Uh, some stone spirits, okay. That's not really that great. An elite clue. Uh, an enriched alloy bar, which is about 200k. And, oh, a first age coin that elks for one mil. Okay, not too bad. We got 86 magic from a Krill Reaper task. But more importantly, we now have 300 Reaper points. Do you know what that means? We can buy from death an incomplete Hydrix attach an onyx to it, and sell it for about 75 mil. This is why you should do your reaper task every day. The points add up, and you can make yourself 75 mil. The incomplete hydrix wouldn't sell, so I bought an onyx and turned it into an uncut hydrix, which actually sells for more than the constituent parts. Maybe there's a high-risk money-making method there. With our newfound wealth, we're going to buy a ton of dinosaur bones to get 92 prayer. I don't want to overshoot, and at 90 prayer, we can get 100,000 prayer XP from the Shrine of Guthix, where Guthix's corpse is hanging out. So we're going to buy 5,000 for now. Sacrifice them on the Wilderness Altar. It's a bit dangerous, but you can exchange your noted bones for unnoted bones at a guy right near the altar, so it's very fast. Of course, I won't be an idiot and have the entire inventory of bones with me at all times. There's a bank near here as well. So I'll probably have maybe 100, 150 in my inventory at once, and then bank for another 150. 84 prayer, leech energy curse. 85 prayer, we can bless spirit shields. 86 prayer, we can leech adrenaline. 87 prayer, chronicle absorption, if we complete the light within. 88 prayer, soul link, if we complete the light within. 89 prayer, the wrath curse, and teamwork protection, if we complete the light within. 90 prayer, we can wear a demon horn necklace with 90 dungeoneering. We have a new port adventure, and we can make a bunch of spirit shields. 91 prayer, superheat form with the completion of the light within. Diversion, herby werby. We're going to get the herb bag upgrade. With 90 prayer, we can come to Gothic Shrine and pay respects again, and get 100,000 prayer XP. Also, if we light all of these candles with, I believe it's 76 fire making, we get a total of 50,000 fire making XP. And now, finally, we get 92 prayer, and we unlock Soul Split. Now that we have Soul Split, that obviously means we should divert our attention to thieving. Obviously. So we're going to do Dishonor Among Thieves so we can get full access to Zemmer Eagle's Fortress. I hate this quest. They try to go for a cute 
heist sort of a thing, but really it's just clunky and dull and slow and just... This quest just sucks. What a Chad move. Nomad throws a spear at me, and what do I do? T-pose. Yeah, all right, quest done. We can get another reward from May. Let's see what we get. All right, standard stuff. Fortune component, some coins. Here's holding up. We get a die on one of the last ones. So this is why we did the quest. Basically, you can only access those safes in there through Lemistard's tunnels, which is very inconvenient, or directly through Zemmerigal's fortress if you completed Dishonor Among Thieves. These four safes require 90, 92, 94, and 96 thieving to pick. You can boost with an Abyssal Lurker to get four levels. So right now, since I have 90 thieving, I can pick the 90, 92, and 94 safes. So we're going to do this. We're going to do some safe cracking. We're going to go into the wilderness, do those safes, because those only require 90. Maybe do some in Zanera, since they require 90 and 94. I'm not sure what level I'm going to get. Well, that's not true. Actually, I do know what level I'm going to get, because I'm recording this audio after I recorded the footage for the next episode, or at least some of the footage for the next episode. Um, okay, never mind. You guys don't know, so that's going to be the mystery. Will I get 95? Will I get 99? Ooh, who knows? Ooh, find out next time on Just Background Noise. Thanks for watching. Take care.